Glad to have you join us on Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Runke Kolawole. We're reaching you from Abuja. The city of Makudi, capital of Benue State, stood still for President Muhammadu Buhari and APC candidates in the state ahead of the 2019 general elections. Adibola Brooklyn Sunday reports that the people of the state say they have no alternative to APC. From Benue State University roundabouts, participants marched through Boko and Yochia U roads, dancing and chanting the slogan, Say Baba, Say Jime. As they worked through nooks and crannies of the city, residents, artisans, and market men and women in solidarity joined the rally and pledge their supports. Call it a mass rally, you may not be wrong. And if you say it's a carnival, you may not be far from the truth. As youths, men and women in this rally converge to register their support for the re-election of President Muhammadu Buhari and his vice, Yemi Oshibaju. Look at school feeding programs. You look at Uncle Boroas scheme. You look at rail system. You look at roads, you look at electricity, you look at uh, trade, um, trade money, market money that is ongoing. There are so much of this social welfare scheme meant for the less privileged, for the masses. After the walk, which took almost four hours, the people proceeded to the campaign office donated by the APC Youth League in the States. Because the future of this country depends on you. And we have a credible leader who is leading by example, and that is President Mohamed Buhari. ABC! Executive members of the Buhari Support Group Center were on ground on behalf of the president. Baba will do the good, the beautiful, and the best. And in Benway, the person who is going to take over, inshallah, Jimmy, will do the best, the beautiful, and the important one. The people described President Buhari as the feeder of public school pupils and hope of civil servants. In Makodi, Benue State, Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Buhari is reassuring Nigerians of the irrevocable commitment of his administration towards advancing the cause of national unity and prosperity. Speaking at the former launch and unveiling of the Buhari Unity Band, the president maintains that Nigeria's unity is not only sacrosanct, but non-negotiable. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. <laughs> Initiated by the Good Governance Ambassadors of Nigeria, Gogan, in collaboration with the Presidency, the Buhari Unity Band is a symbol of solidarity, patriotic spirit, and genuine commitment by well-meaning Nigerians to a united and prosperous Nigeria. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari described the launch of the Unity Band as a demonstration of sincere belief in a united Nigeria and determination to see her succeed as no nation can truly make progress without unity. The Buhari Unity Band is a visual and token symbol of our resolve to live in unity as one and to preach the message of unity wherever we live. Those who subscribe to the Unity Wristband 
will be known as Nigerian Unity Ambassadors. You will be building on the legacy of a number of our patriots who have in the past sacrificed so much, some even their lives, in defense of our nation. Nigeria, the president regretted, has passed through difficult times, but with the help of God, always overcome such crises. He, however, said pockets of issues that question the nation's unity still exist, but expressed the conviction that with the determination of all Nigerians, the country will remain strong and united. I want to commend the good governance ambassadors of Nigeria who initiated this project for their sense of patriotism and commitment. Let me assure you that the government remains committed to advancing the cause of national unity and progress. I urge all Nigerians of goodwill to sign up to this initiative by obtaining and wearing the unity band. Speakers at the event, including Senator Abu Ibrahim, who represented Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, were unanimous that more than anything else, Nigeria needs unity for a sustainable future. So Mr. Ashiwaju is away, his heart is here, and he is praying for us, and we should work hard and unite this country. We do not have another country apart from this one. Let's try to live in peace. The national coordinator of the Good Governance Ambassadors of Nigeria, Chief Felix Idiga, had earlier informed the gathering that their goal is to mobilize all Nigerians as peace ambassadors to say no to what he called united looting and say yes to a united Nigeria. Let us unite for a better future. Without unity, terror, chaos, and instability arises. Good Governance Ambassadors of Nigeria is a non-governmental organization championing the re-election bid of President Muhammad Buhari and committed to driving unity and love among Nigerians as well as entrenching the culture of hate for corruption. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. In the meantime, President Muhammadu Buhari has confirmed the appointment of chief executive officers and executive directors of federal agencies. Some of the appointees include Mr. Folasho Nwadebi Sishonubui, Deputy Governor, Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Clement Onyabo Unze, Director General, Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, Ambassador Abdullah Abdul Jalil Suleiman, Director General, Directorate of Technical Cooperation in Africa. In all, the appointees are 19, out of which two appointments were renewed. They are that of Professor Okechuku Ukoma, Director General, National Center for Technology Management, and Professor Victor Adebayo Adetiloye, Chief Medical Director, Obafemi Awolowo University Teaching Hospital, Ileife. The president enjoins the new appointees to serve the nation with all sense of responsibility, honesty, diligence, and promote good governance while urging them to bring their wealth of experience to bear in the discharge of their duties. Also, the federal government has restated that no part of Nigeria will be neglected for political consideration or otherwise in the distribution of infrastructural development projects currently being executed by the present administration. Minister of State, Industry, Trade and Investment, Hajia Aisha Abubakar, said this while inaugurating two projects executed by the National Ecological Fund Office in Jaguar State. Awal Mohamed Kazauri reports. NTA News investigation reveals that many parts of Jigar State are facing threat of erosion, destroying residential areas and farmlands. That is why the intervention of the federal government to address the problem through ecological fund is a good news to people of Jigawa State. Inaugurating two of such projects in Balangu, in Kafin Hausa and Guaram local government areas, Minister of State Industry, Trade and Investment, Supervising Women Affairs, Hajia Aisha Abubakar, assured Nigerians of even distribution of projects. Projects. This project is expected to check flooding and erosion menace in the community. The age-long problem of early erosion and flooding in this part of the country cannot be overemphasized. This is a 
intervention will bring a huge relief to the community, which has for a very long time been stressed by these ecological challenges. I would once again I'd like to appeal uh, for a Yesterday, Gawa is beset by the ratification in the northwestern part of the state, in the northeastern part of the state. Uh, we have early erosion and soil degradation in this part of the state. The benefiting communities express appreciation to the federal government for addressing the problem they have been facing over the years. In Duse, Awal Muhammad Kazauri, NTA News. The United Kingdom Secretary of State for Defence, Right Honourable Gavin Williamson, has commended the effort of the troops of Operation Lafayette Adoli for providing security and a conducive atmosphere for the people of the northeast Nigeria. Gavin Williamson stated this when he visited the headquarters of Theatre Command Operation Lafayette Adoli in Meduguri. A statement signed by the Director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Texas Chuku, noted that the already existing collaboration between Nigeria and the United Kingdom militaries would further strengthen the visit. The Chief of Training and Operations, Army Major General Lamidi Adioshun, stated that talks are at advanced stage on setting up a joint planning center for counterinsurgency operations between Nigeria and the UK, while reiterating that the Nigerian military remains highly professional in the discharge of his constitutional roles. And to other stories now, the Nigeria Prison Service has held a two-day sensitization on the dangers of drug abuse and other harmful substances for inmates of Kuji prisons. This is to, prefer, to prepare offenders for a successful reintegration into the society. My Jonathan Adams said reports that the Controller General of Nigeria Prison Service, Jafaru Ahmed, flagged off the workshop. Ibo Indian head, Abisela, a week at a still like that can 50,000. 50,000? Yeah. How did they get Indian head? They go Mabushi side, Dolphin, a frontier, they buy and come. Drug abuse and other substance is a serious public menace that affects almost every home in Africa and the world. The conduct of drug abuse education in a custodial institution as ours is imperative. The conduct of drug abuse education in a custodial institution as ours is imperative. Each year, experts say, Drug abuse causes millions of deaths and mental illnesses. Substances such as alcohol, marijuana, and nicotine are considered dangerous. In reality, experts in the field of medicine say drug addiction is a chronic disease characterized by drug seeking and use that is compulsive or difficult to control despite harmful consequences. This ceremony is part of the present administration's strategies, a reposition in the Nigerian prison service, as stakeholders here believe that a prison free from drug is a violent-free prison and a violent-free society and a nation. It is a known fact globally that there is a relationship between drug, crime, and criminality. But the message here it's clear. You can take a horse to the river, but you cannot force the horse to drink the water. From Kujay prisons in Abuja, Morijana to Adam Said, NTA News. Licenses of Korea companies revoked. Let's get an update of this and other stories from Elizabeth in Lagos. Hi, Dizzy. It's nice to see you on care and thanks for joining us in Lagos. Operators in the haulage sector have been challenged to imbibe standard operating procedure. This was at the end of the safe to load campaign held in Lagos. Mohamed Abdukadri reports. The FRSC safe to load program is an intervention program for the enforcement of minimum safety standard for the 
petroleum haulage operation in Nigeria. For three days, regulators and operators in the nation's haulage sector worked together. After the open rallies, the key players in the sector returned to the drawing table to review and reject the safe to load program. When we look at the need to now draw in more people, because this thing is multi-personalized and it crosses across all agencies, we can ask ourselves questions if we are all doing well in all these things. The robust engagement brought to the fore the need for stringent integrity tests for tanker drivers and truck auditing. It's a very good program. In fact, since the commencement of the program, so it has helped to conscientize and sensitize our members on wheel. And it has reduced accident to a very minimal, I mean, bearers and minimal. It's a very good thing in the industry because they are encouraging we, the stakeholders, on how the process of loading our trucks in a very safe way. The platform gave the opportunity to the participants to discuss the need to comply with regulatory obligations and for enhanced maintenance culture for trucks. In Lagos, Muhammad Abdel Kadri, NTA News. With a view to repositioning courier companies in Nigeria as well as ensure operators cooperate with set standards, the Korea Regulatory Department has shut down not less than 30 courier companies operating in Lagos. Diana Ajele compiled this report. The General Manager Korea Regulatory Department, Dr. Ishaya Musadiwa, disclosed that the licenses of the 30 Korea operators were revoked for contravening the laws regulating the practice. It's better we have a small, neat, uh, efficient operators that will run the affairs of the Korea instead of having a proliferation of quack uh, operators that will not give services. He therefore advised the public to desist from patronizing questionable Korea companies for their own safety. It is a warning to all Nigerians and the stakeholders not to do any business with Korea companies whose licenses are, as from this moment, revoked. The Nigeria Postal Service, NIPOST, says it will not relent in ensuring that illegal Korea operators who fail to comply with the rules and regulations of the practice are not allowed to carry out their business operations in the country. Eight to former President Goodluck Jonathan Waripamo Owe Dudafa has been rearranged at the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos over alleged 1.6 billion naira fraud. He was rearranged before Justice Mohammed Idris alongside one Iweju Na. Vera Chumba, who was at the Federal High Court, filed this report. The rearrangement of the former senior special assistant to former President Goodluck Jonathan alongside Iwejo Joseph Nna followed the dismissal of the preliminary objection raised by the defense on the 22 count amended charge preferred against them by the EFCC. The defense had raised objection on the legality of the amendment when it has closed its case. In his ruling, Justice Mohammed Idris said the amendment is within the ambit of Section 219 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and can be done any time before judgment and in the interest of justice. When the charge was read, the two accused persons pleaded not guilty. They were first arraigned in 2016 on 23 counts of conspiracy to conceal proceeds of crime amounting to 1.6 billion naira. The court also allowed the accused person to continue with the previous bail earlier granted by the court. The defense team also informed the court that they would need to call their witnesses afresh. Counsel to EFCC, Rotimi Uyadapo, told the court that the prosecution is ready to call prosecution witnesses. Further hearing continues on the 19th of November. In Lagos, Viera Chumuba, NTA News. Time now to join Charles Abba in our marketing network center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Charles. Hello, Elizabeth, and a warm welcome to Makudi. The Commandant, Army War College, Nigeria, Major General John Enenche, has expressed the commitment of the Nigerian Army to the training of special forces to effectively combat insecurity in any parts of the country. 
Major General Nature gave the assurance when he led course two, 2018, participants of the college on a study tour of operation formations of Operation Well Stroke in Benue and Nasarawa states. Achigli Magaji has details. Operation Special Joint Security Outfit with the purpose of tackling the split of insecurity along the Benue, Nasarawa and Taraba corridor. Its operation is said to be a good model of study for the participants of the World College as it affords them the opportunity to learn firsthand from the combat personnel on the field. The tour took the participants to the Nigerian Army School of Military Engineering, NASME, where they witnessed the Riverine Patrol demonstration, which the commandant say is a good experience. And one of the functions, the responsibilities, the objectives of setting up the War College is to assess current operations, look at it and see how they can improve it upon it and then make recommendations to the appropriate uh, operational. That is why we are here, that is the essence. Because of the influence of some of the armed elements using the river Benue to cross from Adjani State and to Benue State to cement the problem. So we needed, we, we decided that we should have a good river patrol team that can deny the enemy freedom of action. At the Giza unit of the Operation West Stroke in Kiana local government area of Nasarawa State, there was an interactive session between the course participants and the special troops of the West Stroke on their challenges and successes. The team of the study is enhancing the capabilities of the Nigerian Army in combating internal security challenges in Makudi. In news. In a related development, the Nigerian military says it will continue to uphold and respect the human rights of citizens while carrying out its constitutional duties in the various theaters of operation. This came to the fore of the combined annual training and retreat taking place in Makudi, the Benue state capital. Elias Itia reports. The four-day event with this team, the chaplain's response to violence, use and abuse of human rights in the present-day Nigeria is to chart a new course and to remain professionally responsive in the execution of rules of the military without violation of human rights. Coordinator Armed Forces and Director of Chaplain Services, Brigadier General Charles Irebo says, available hands and expertise must be tailored towards building bridges of peace as it concerns the civil populace. We use our general order to employ all available hands in various international ties in order to restore normalcy in this after the Benue State Governor Samuel Otum, represented by the Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology, Professor Dennis Itiabia, described the theme as appropriate, going to the cases of violence in the state and other parts of the country on defenseless populace. He said, prevention of violence in the populace is possible if state and non-state actors join forces. The event was attended by both serving and retired personnel from the Nigerian Army, the Navy and the Nigerian Air Force, as well as traditional rulers and other personalities. The retreat also featured proper presentations on various relevant topics. In Makudi, Elias, Itiab, Intenis. The Benue State Traditional Council says it will use all within its resources to ensure that the people collect their permanent voter cards and participate fully in the 2019 general elections and subsequent ones. Chairman of the if His Royal Majesty, Professor James Ayase, stated this when the National Commissioner INEC in charge of Anambra, Benue and Enugu states, Festus Okoye, paid him a visit at his palace in Boko, Benue state. Here are the details. The large number of unclaimed permanent voter cards at the INEC office and the need to mobilize people to collect them have made INEC to embark on massive sensitization of various communities in Benway State. The National Commissioner INEC, Festus Okoye, led the delegation to the palace of the tour chief, Professor James Ayase in Boko. We want all registered voters to visit all in Benway State to go and check their names to make sure that their names are properly spelled. 
that their, back, their bio data is properly captured. His Royal Majesty, the Tortif, Professor James Ayase, who lauded INEC for its role so far in the election processes, assured the Commission of their support to achieve a peaceful poll come 2019. We will do all the mobilization that is required of us to do. Resident Electoral Commissioner in Benue State, Nentawe Yilwadda, who admitted the support of the state, indicated that a committee has been set up to prosecute the electoral laws for credible elections. The team inspected some polling units in parts of the communities to identify some issues on what to do to ensure a free and fair election. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And that report does it from Makudi, but Nationwide continues shortly in Abuja with Ronke after these messages. Please don't go away. Take that commercial break. Let's take more stories. The state of federal rules in Kogi State has been described as one that requires urgent attention to make them more motorable. This was the concern of the members of the House Committee on Federal Rules Maintenance Agency when they inspected maintenance work in some parts of Kogi State. Austin Ibe reports. Kogi State is bordered by 10 states in Nigeria and has 16 federal roads with a total length of about 1,200 kilometers, which are routinely maintained by the agency in the state through contract awards and direct labor. But in recent years, the roads have gone bad, requiring huge sums of money to maintain. We are suffering too much almost every day. The journey that was supposed to take two hours, we will use like five hours. This explains the visit by the members of House Committee on FEMA to Kogi State as part of their oversight function to see the level of work carried out by FEMA in Kogi State in 2018. The members who inspected ongoing work on Lokoja Okene Road, Okene Kaba, Okene Ibilo, Lokoja Obajana, Kaba Isanlu, and other roads where maintenance work were carried out appreciated the work done by FEMA through direct labor. Oh, yes, but their commitment will give them about 70 80 percent, but it will result on ground, I'll say 50 percent. I'm more impressed with what I've seen here the direct labor, the quality of the contracts. Uh, the the contractors are, is poor. Uh, the one done from Kaba to Iyara, 2016, is collapsed. Officials of FEMA who briefed members of the House of Representatives decried paucity of funds as part of the reasons for the slow pace of maintenance work on the federal roads. We are utilizing the available funds to the best of our ability. We are having value for money. Where we have bought us are many, especially we have a road called Ida Odolu to Insuka to Benue State border. That road is totally bad. Other members who spoke suggested that, considering the strategic location of Kogi State to states in the east, west, and north, there is the need for enhanced budgetary allocation for maintenance or rehabilitation of these roads in Lokoja. The International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, has pledged continuous support to boost Nigeria's agricultural activities towards socio-economic development. IFAD country representative to Nigeria, Nadine Bosa, said the international organization currently supports rice and cassava value chain production as well as climate change intervention in 12 states of the Federation. Musaba Baliu has that report. Thank you for receiving us today. Nadim Gosa has just been posted to Nigeria as the representative of International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD. She is in Minanaja State to assess IFAD's intervention program in rice and cassava value chain in the state. This multipurpose cassava processing center in local Goma, Wushishi local government area, was established under the IFAD support program. And beneficiaries here informed visiting country representative that the facility has improved their fortunes. We want to be a good partner. We want to understand what the needs are and the needs of these women, they're clear, they know what they want and see how we can support them together with the government. So once we know where we are best positioned, what is needed, I think IFAD is, is here to support and help the government and the people of Nigeria. IFAD is spending more than $100 million on extension services as well as production, processing and marketing of rice and cassava. 
We produce not less than 150,000 metric tons every year to the national grid. So for the four years of the program, we've contributed almost uh, 500,000 plus. We have been a willing partner. We have been great partners with IFAD, and that's why they bring the best and brightest into Nigeria. Apart from Niger State, IFAD is also carrying out intervention programs in Benue, Taraba, Ogun, Ebonyi, and Anambra states with focus on rice and cassava value chain. In Mina, Musababa Aliyu, NTA News. What is your expression when you drive by the wayside and you see a sheep of refuse and the stench which makes your tummy rumbles? Quite devastating, right? But what is your attitude to waste management? Answers to this is contained in the nation's cleanliness rating index for all states presented by the Clean Up Nigeria. Gufan Shaji has that report. The prevalence of diseases resulting to deaths is said to be traced to the poor state of sanitation and waste management habits of most Nigerians. In finding practical actions to sustain in the quality of the Nigerian environment, an agenda was set for a cleaner heritage and protection of the lives of sanitation workers from diseases as a result of constant contact with waste. Clean Up Nigeria, which is leading this mission, is not only advocating, but also using statistical data for proper sanitation. Full statistics provided that Apavum had three of it, the cleanest state, the cleanest city, and the cleanest in South-South geopolitical zone. Now, what would do we really want? From the issue of the proclamation that was, was issued, is that attention should be more focused on waste management, the sanitation workers, and the people's attitude. As a means of collaborating, you know, the emergency of unwashed declared by the president. The message to institutions and groups is partnership to better the Nigerian environment by cleaning up drains and other waste, as well as control vegetation for a healthier and safe Nigeria. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTN News. Sustainable development goals remain the blueprint to eradicate extreme poverty and achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. Senior Special Assistant to the President of Sustainable Development Goals, Adejoke Orelope Adefulire, who was in Government House Calabar, says this could be achieved through inclusive partnership. Uduake Tim reports. With the implementation of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, Cross River State is believed to have contributed significantly to the improvement of lives of its citizenry. With several industries cited in the state to address unemployment, poverty, and other challenges, as well as improving the education sector with the commencement of work at the Teachers Continuous Training College, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Orelupe Adefulire, said these projects are for the benefit of the citizenry. We are here to jointly support your development vision for Cross River State and to work together to mainstream the Sustainable Development Goals. You have not been ayade lauded the federal government for ensuring that every part of the country gets the desired democratic dividends, even as he pledged his administration's readiness to fulfill the parts of government. SDG is also part of attitudinal orientation to restore value to man and dignity to manhood. This is Nationwide on the NTA. We now take some messages more reports shortly. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism, as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony, are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. 
Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. My name is uh, Orioye Benedict Baishimure. I am a native of uh, Odunjemitale community, Odola in the larger local government area. I am an Empower beneficiary, NTH to be precise. Empower has seriously impacted into my business and my local community. Before the advent of the Empower program, I didn't really have the initiative of starting the business like this. And as it is now, everybody around the community is interested to work with me because of the value, the value addition that I've added into the business. I got some of this idea through the Empower tab, the tab that was given to us. The thing that's really helped my local community. The most important thing is that it has really changed the mentality of the graduates in my community. Nigeria, a land of promise, land of potential, rich in oil, arable land and solid minerals, yet hunger, joblessness, homelessness and poverty are widespread. Over the years, Nigeria has suffered from hospitals without drugs, schools without teachers and a huge infrastructure deficit. Clearly, we are yet to reach our full potential and one of the reasons is because People choose bad leaders. Some even sell their conscience for a few thousand naira for 2019 elections. Don't sell your vote. Don't sell your future. Don't buy the people's lives. Vote selling is a crime against yourself. You will spend the next four years paying for it. Vote buying is against the law. Politicians, stop buying votes. People, stop selling your future. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Glad to know you're still watching Nationwide. Justice Aisha Bawabuari of the Niger State High Court 3 has convicted and sentenced a retired civil servant, Udogi Mohammed Abdullahi, to two years in prison with an option of 200 thousand naira fine. The convict alongside Hassan Gulu Hussein were arraigned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for alleged pension scam and defrauding the federal government of the sum of 1,647,000 naira. Mukhtar Abubakar Wawo reports. This persons in Dagi Muhammad Abdullahi and Hassan Gulu Hussein were arraigned on one count charge each by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. And Dagi Mohammed Abdullahi, who was arraigned for voluntarily assisting Hassan Gulu Hussein to dispose the sum of 1,647,000 naira, believed to be stolen property, pleaded guilty and was sentenced to two years imprisonment with an option of 200,000 naira fine. Because of his naiveness, he was um, over putting money into his account, and after that, he said, um, after putting the money, you give us some certain percentage, and you hold the remaining. Hassan Gulu Hussein, who was arraigned for alleged Position and use of the said money transferred to him by the first accused person with the knowledge that the money was the proceed of his criminal conduct pleaded not guilty. Having pleaded not guilty, his counsel moved an application for bail pending proper determination of the substantive matter. He is not bound by the plea of his uh, co-accused. Justice Aisha Barbari granted Hassan Gulu Hussein bail in the sum of 500,000 naira and two shorty residing within the jurisdiction of the court. She then fixed the 21st of November for the commencement of trial. From the State Judiciary Complex, Mukhtar Abubakar, NTA News. 
The House of Representatives is working to reduce hard fare, which has recently generated concern among Nigerian programs. Chairman, House Committee on Hajj and Foreign Affairs, Abdullahi Abubakar Salami, stated this. At the 26th Federal, State, Local Government and Other Stakeholders Conference in Abuja, the legislator said a subcommittee has already been set up to investigate how the current hard fare was arrived at. He said the committee has visited the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia of fact finding, disclosing that its assignment has reached an advanced stage. Abdullahi Musa Suleja reports that speakers at the conference called on the National Heart Commission of Nigeria to address the short time frame given to intended programs to pay heart fare. This, they said, will affect utilization of the slot being approved for Nigeria by Saudi authorities. Who and now to educational matters, Delta State, Edu uh, Delta State Government is set to improve policies concerning private universities. As Governor Ifai Okowa says, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund should do more to develop education in Nigeria by supporting both public and private institutions of learning. He made this submission at the combined convocation ceremonies of the Western Delta University of Ogara in Delta State. Anwoli Okonta reports. In fulfillment of the Sustainable Development Goals, the Western Delta State University is ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education and promoting lifelong learning opportunities. This has been demonstrated with these combined 37th convocation ceremonies and the 10th anniversary of the university, where graduates of various disciplines have been produced. The governor of the state, Dr. Ifan Yokowa, therefore said, Sustainable educational growth can further be achieved if private and public institutions are adequately funded. In demonstration of this, he instituted a 500,000 Naira endowment fund for best graduating students from 2017 to 2018 academic session. It is trying to make the public universities have better infrastructure and learning facilities, which must also find ways of ensuring the development of the private institutions. The week-long event witnessed the installation of the former governor of Akwaibom State, Victor Atta, as first chancellor of the university. He urged the graduates to bring about positive changes in the society. In the same vein, the vice chancellor, Professor Otete Okobia, said the institution is committed to the pursuit of excellence, technological development, and social service. I'm going to make sure that we follow those statutes, and believe me, I see a great future. And it's strategically placed, and we have quality teachers, and really they will enjoy, they will make it. 608 graduates were awarded certificates in various disciplines alongside awards and cash gifts for high flyers. In Ogara Delta State, Anguli Okonta, NTA News. We now join Bright in Enugu for more reports. Hello, Bright. Hello, Uke, and welcome to Enugu. Farmers affected by the recent flooding in Anabra State have received relief materials and farm input to up millions of naira from the Value Chain Development Program in the State Ministry of Agriculture. Joe Iluibu reports that the Anambra State Government has also put measures in place to ensure the farmers take part in dry season farming. The items presented to the farmers at one of the holding centers at the Uwe Regional Hospital of rice, gari, cartons of noodles, vegetable oil, and toiletries. Presenting the items on behalf of the Ministry and Amber State Commissioner for Agriculture, Mechanization, Processing, and Export, Afam Banefo said the gesture is to ameliorate the farmer's plight as a result of the flooding. We've been going, toiling around, uh, also utilizing all extension services, uh, programs, but today, Value Chain Development Program, it's a program, IFA sponsored program, uh, whom we beckoned and they also head us out immediately. Addressing the affected farmers, the state program coordinator, Value Chain Development Program, Namdi Agunche, said the affected farmers will also receive other agricultural inputs such as rice seedlings, fertilizer, and cassava cuttings to start up again. The planting input will, is available. We we'll provide it as soon as 
the, the, the flood receipts will support them. We are very, very happy. All, this, all these things they give us, they are going to use it. Well, well it, it will help us to eat because this flood destroys so many things for our areas. Farmers in nine out of the 21 local government areas in Anambra State were affected by the flood disaster this year. From Umwewe in Anambra West local government area, Joy Imwebu, NTA News. Security operatives in Enugu State have restated their for peace, security of lives and property in the state and country at large. They made this commitment during the show of force exercised by the Joint Security Operatives to show their combat readiness at all times. Susan Eze reports. The joint show of force by the Nigerian Army, police, road safety, civil defense and air force was another opportunity for officers of security agencies to interact and strategize. The general officer commanding 82 division, Major General Emmanuel Kabok, reminded the officers to discharge their duties professionally and to be alive to their core responsibility of securing lives and property. Now, the Bureau of Assurance, the law abiding agents, we are telling them that we are not sleeping, that we are ready to protect them. Major General Kabok stressed that citizens have nothing to fear and are advised to go about their legitimate activities. He added that they are committed to flushing out criminal elements in the society. We are also telling criminals that may have the intention of raising their ugly heads to disrupt the peace within the area of responsibility, that we are also prepared to deal with them decisively. The exercise was conducted in all the states of the, of the country, including Cross River. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. The new commandant, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in Anambra State, Obiagili Obiajulu, has paraded two suspects for alleged involvement in illegal dealing in adulterated diesel. Ngozi Okafo reports that the new commandant replaces the late commandant, John Awe, who died in September this year. The driver of a short truck, Ike Chukwese, with the exhibit of the alleged adulterated diesel alongside his conductor, Sam De Vincent, now aiding investigation, were said to have been intercepted at about 9.45 p.m. in Oga, Agata Council area of Anambra State, on the 30th of October this year. Obe Ajolo, who expressed her resolve to promote security situation in Anambra State and motivate men of a command for efficient service delivery, warns that any involvement in the petroleum sector without proper licensing and approval amounts to economic sabotage. But I can assure you that in the case of invitation, if they are not guilty, we release them. And if they are not found, whatever the action they took declares that they are not guilty, we release them, free of charge. But if they are, we charge them accordingly. She noted that with the course mission to protect life and property of a citizenry, she is ready to complement the Anambra state government's efforts and criminalities in the state. In Oka, Ngozi Oka for NTA News. That's our contribution from Enugu Nationwide continues after this timeout. Bright in Enugu, we thank you. President Muhammadu Buhari has restated that his vision and objectives for Nigeria are very clear, and he is on course to achieving them. President Buhari said this while receiving members of the Christian Association of Nigeria, led by the President Reverend Samson Ayukule in the State House, Abuja. A statement signed by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adishina, noted that President Buhari is doing his best to fulfill his electoral promises of securing the country, fighting corruption, and resuscitating the economy. The current delegation lauded the efforts of the President in fighting corruption, the initiative to stem the tide of unemployment, various efforts aimed at revamping the economy and the fight against Boko Haram terrorists. This is Nationwide. Time to post for more messages, more reports shortly. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. 
some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Join us every Saturday by 10 p.m. for Eye on the Road. The program from the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency, FEMA. We'll bring you highlights of policies and programs on road maintenance. You'll hear from road users as well as those charged with maintaining the roads. It's interactive. It's informative. It's educative. It's Eye on the Road. Showing Saturdays at 10 p.m. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. And now to more reports. In line with ECHO as enabling instrument relating to the enhancement of the powers of Parliament, the Parliament reconvenes to consider the community budget for 2019. Being the second ordinary session, the Parliament is also to consider a draft program of activity for 2019. Joseph Orok reports. <laughs> Three parliamentary oversight missions were sent to Senegal, Burkina Faso, and the Bene Togo, Ghana Axis on a fact finding agenda on the concerns of the grassroots population. The reports of these and other issues, the Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament, Mustafa Sisilo, says will be considered. The Speaker, while noting various achievements recorded by ECOWAS to include the recent inauguration of the Nigerian Bene Border Post, urged members of Parliament to redouble efforts in working for the good of the sub-region. The role of Parliament in uh, election observation is primordial for uh, strengthening democracy and credibility of elections because who else uh, other than a parliamentarian who knows how to observe elections uh, so as to ex exercise their mandate. While the President of ECOWAS Court reaffirms the resolve of the institution to sustain its role of interpreting laws and promoting the rule of law, the Speaker of Niger National Assembly, Hosseini Tin, stressed the need for the ECOWAS Parliament to work for the elimination of terrorism and insecurity within the sub-region. Quality justice is everybody's desire. Our population wants more than ever before that the building of ECOWAS will make us to uh, espouse the ideals of dignity for human beings and liberty for all citizens. Meanwhile, the Speaker of ECOWAS Parliament, Mustafa Sisilo, is wishing contending politicians in the 2019 general elections in Nigeria and Senegal the best of their outing. In Abuja, Joseph Orok, NTA News. Tamara Ibiwe is standing by with latest development from the sports world. As the Super Eagles of Nigeria prepare to face Bafana Bafana of South Africa in a second leg 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier in Johannesburg Saturday, enthusiasts have tipped the Genotro led team to claim maximum points to automatically qualify for the showpiece with a game at hand. We won the other three matches against Seychelles, the home and away against uh, Libya. So I also want to believe that we can consolidate right on this one against FMB Southampton Stadium in Johannesburg. All is set for the kick-up of the 11th edition of Africa Women's Cup of Nations in Ghana Saturday, with the host taking on Algeria in the opener of Group A, while Mali and Cameroon file out later on. On Sunday, Nigeria's Super Falcons will begin their title defense with a game against South Africa in Group B, while Zambia face Equatorial Guinea in the group's other fixture. The Falcons have won eight out of the 11 tournaments held so far since inception in 1991.
and basketball, the 2018 Total National Basketball Division One League dunks off November 27, with 20 teams set to compete. 11 teams in the Savannah Conference will meet at the Ape Aku Stadium, Makodi, between November 27 and December 4 for the two available national slots, while nine teams meet in the Atlantic Conference. The tournament climaxes between December 17 and 22 in Lagos, with the two top teams gaining promotion to the Premier League. With sports update, Tamara Ebiwe, NTA News. Now, a bit of weather.